Hello fellow Leggers, thank you for joining us once again on a Midlands tour because we're at the Grand Theatre in Wolverhampton. And um, we're seeing a play which I've got to say I'm a little bit embarrassed to have never have seen because it's a British classic, right? Yes, it, it's up there. Film as well. Yeah, film as well. And of course that is Educating Rita. So stick around to find out all of our thoughts. Find out how many stars. And whether it's Break a Leg or, or Leg It. <laughs> Educating Rita, everyone's heard of it. Well, like, I think everyone else it. has seen it apart from us, to be honest, because I get the, she, get the impression. I mean, it's I've Julie Walter, she it. was Oscar yeah. nominated for this Michael role. Michael Caine. Michael Caine, who was in the well. original film, but not in the original stage production. So Julie Walter was in the actual stage she production was, she, and then went into the film? Yes, and then they got Michael Caine. So whoever played the original <laughs> Michael Frank, Caine part, Frank, I think it is. Yeah, was probably <laughs> a bit pissed, <laughs> a bit is what up. I would say. Okay. But the play is. It premiered at the Donmar Warehouse in 1980 and was later adapted into that BAFTA and Golden Globe Award winning film of the same name. Now the play won an Olivier Award for Best Comedy and it tells the story of a young working class Liverpudlian woman who decides to return to education and finds herself under the tuition of an alcoholic professor at the start of a journey which changes both of their lives forever. Yes, now I know it should be good because of the back catalogue, but also because it's written by Willie Russell, who yes. also did the musical Blood Brothers. Shirley Valentine. Shirley Valentine. Which again, I've never seen. Oh. Neither have I. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Isn't it? All I these classic, classic British plays and films, I've never ever seen them. Okay. Um, he also did, as you mentioned earlier, Stags and Hens. Stags and Hens, a brilliant play, recommend it. I love Willie Russell, Liverpool's finest, isn't he? He certainly is. Now, playing the part of Frank in this production is Stephen Tompkinson. We recently saw him playing Ebenezer Scrooge in uh, Christmas Carol at the Old Vic, we the did. Jack Thorne adaptation. He was great. Check it out up there. Um, and we have an up and comer in this, playing <laughs> Rita. Jessica Johnson is playing that part. Okay, looking forward to it. Two act, so stick around for our 30 second interval breakdown. And as usual, stick around to the end to hear all of our thoughts and find out how many stars. We've come to the interval, which means it's time for the break of Leggers. 30, 30 second interval, interval breakdown. breakdown. Oh, what do you think so far? Um, it's a really interesting text, hard work on performers because there's only the two of them, but a real developing narrative. Um, some characters have got a long journey to go on. They're performing it with passion, a lovely set. What do you think? Yeah, beautiful to look at and to listen to. Willie Russell really knows his stuff and I'm struggling to think of someone that understands class struggles in the way that he does from both ends of the spectrum. I'm interested to see where it's going to go. There's a lot of potential, there's a lot of upset, a lot of heartbreak. Educating Rita, we've come to the end. Do you feel educated? I mean, I would really like for Willie Russell to write a new piece called Educating the Audience on how to behave. <laughs> Uh, can we, during are we a theatre show, let's come back. Let's not have that now. Let's keep it on so, topic. We, right? Let's come back we touch to that later. Because there's one thing having sweets, but I think what it was actually Kinder Bueno. And I don't know if you know Kinder <laughs> Sorry, Bueno. Sorry, not sponsored. Uh, not sponsored, Listen. but it was a packet, yeah. and these packets were, which was <laughs> noise. Packets and, and then packets. each packet was, and it wasn't just open it and get it out. It was unpeeled like a it, banana. It is. And then a segment, and the noise was. The Everywhere. Kinder Bueno is, What's the, wrong with is audience the babushka members? doll of the candy bar land. Because <laughs> packaging wise, it just keeps coming, doesn't it? Also, single wise. use plastic, surely they're, they're up for a rethink on that packaging, aren't they? However, but deep also, breaths, woosa. Also, drinks oh, on the drinks. front of the stage. And, and packets of candy and crisps on the front of the stage. Guys, I keep saying it, this ain't Netflix. These people are there, and so are hundreds of other people around you. So please, please consider others when attending the theatre. Anyway, it's out of the way. Let's get on Doesn't to the Doesn't that piece. tie in quite nicely? Because isn't it <coughs> just the point that people are coming to the theatre? Isn't that the point of the piece, in a way? I'm making a linkage. You see the I'd link? See, I mean, it's tenuous, because it's not about That's behavior, something I like. If we're it? talking about the piece, let's talk about the piece, Educating okay. Rita. Let's talk about Willie Russell's work. And There's I can... something I liked in there. Just what do you one think? thing. Well, uh, something I was going to say is oh. that he promotes the theatre, and I like the idea that this, um, this character, Rita, has kind of never really been to the theatre. She dips her toe in with amateur theatre, yeah. and for her, Frank's like, no, anything <laughs> but amateur theatre. Anyway, but then she does go to a professional 
National Theatre and it touches her and moves her. She has this amazing experience. Which, and I like that message. Which is one of the elements that ultimately, no spoilers really, changes her life and wakes her up to a wider society and, and to experience culture in a way that she hasn't experienced before and to appreciate art in a way because she's had a tutor that's inspired her and she's been made to believe that she's worth something more. Now, it borrows heavily from Pygmalion and therefore My Fair Lady. It mm. is that same sort of a, a story yeah. of teaching someone that they are more than what they feel that they are they they are they 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 are all and then or the that they've been made to feel they are kind of outgrowing uh, and becoming the teacher yeah i mean and that's yeah. what every teacher wants isn't it for their pupil to go on to a, ascend there done heights. a good job yeah and i think it is just an inspiring wonderful message and what willie russell understands is the difference he's able to write from both ends of that class spectrum and understand the um the challenges of belonging to a certain class and how you can integrate with one another i mean i can i could put this back to brexit and people talking about multiculturalism not working because people are made to stay in their boxes and therefore they don't integrate so they don't aspire to be more and that's part of the problem we have in this country right now so i think it's a real pertinent time that we should have this piece yes. back out on the road I, I think it speaks to a message that resonates well with me that you know you've got to get out there and experience things for us it's See theater things from a different point of yeah. view and culture mm. and having having different experiences whether it's poetry or whatever it is walking, in, walking a mile in someone else's shoes is very important it as is. well around it almost yep. reminded me of um is our country is good when they get sent, sent to australia mm -hmm. the convicts and they realize that they, this country is good this country is good is that what it is and they put on a production so they realize that they're going to be sticking around in australia potentially they got time, they? setting up a civilization and they can't just use the whip to um get people to oblige they need to educate them and introduce them to art and culture in order to become better people so, and that message stands out and i like it for wonderfully that. universal themes is what this has and plus it says that about how things are subjective yeah are. And, and i that, think that's about i mean we say well. that all the time it's for just every, our opinion for every piece that we have absolutely hated we have been abused thoroughly in the comments <laughs> for the people that don't agree because art is so subjective and some of those that we've loved other people have gone meh what the hell are you thinking think so. guys so that's a really nice message as well and yep. we're following this character rita mm -hmm. that i think a lot of people can recognize and aspire to maybe resonate with it's really well written yeah considering it. it's one location a series of scenes over a period of time mm -hmm. some really nice journey arcs there yeah. that he's created so well written. you want me to move on now I want come on then what are we going to talk about let's talk about the um cast there's only two of them <laughs> okay. Stephen tomkinson in the role of frank i mean it must be daunting although it, although Michael Caine didn't play it originally to step into a role which Michael Caine is so well known for was so iconic a part that he you know sort of made more famous than it was I guess yeah I think not just stepping must into, be very sort of like I say uh, intimidating I think not just stepping in his shoes but I think the audience's expectation yeah. of how that role is yeah because they've already seen a Frank maybe thinking certain lines should be delivered a certain way. Yeah. How do you put your own spin on that? I, get, I liked what he did because I don't know that That's version. it. But I usually, I liked what he did for the <laughs> fact that it's a great part. It's so well written. It's layered. What Willie Russell is really good at is not giving you the whole story. It's layers. It's on every single scene. It's discovering a little bit more about a Peeling character. Peeling away a layer of an And onion. I saw Stephen, I saw this falling away of a facade you know of the sort of you know big, the big I am at the beginning and the softening as he went on and the insecurity of him I thought was played brilliantly by Stephen I just really felt felt the guy's journey I really did yeah absolutely I, I felt really safe in his hands I know that's kind of like a bit of a throwaway thing but I felt absolutely safe in everything he was doing and all of his choices in his delivery you his movement him. around the stage yeah uh, and as such I was able to buy into Frank and what was going on for Frank in each stage absolutely also Jessica Johnson in the role of Rita herself also Susan perhaps Charlotte but yeah, she has several different pseudonyms, doesn't she? She in does, this? but I think it but, will go for Rita. Yeah, right? Rita <laughs> in this. And I just thought, I, I mean, I liked her a lot more as time went on. Um, it's the sort of part where 
it's all about her. It's she's learning to love herself. She's learning to appreciate and understand what she is worth. How do you think she did with that? Um, it's a brilliantly written character. Oh my goodness! In terms of a journey and an arc, it's such a difference from that first scene to that later scene. That's an actor's dream to mm. be given. Um, I, I think the danger people fall into is that those first couple of scenes where it is quite scatty and manic to try and make it funny and to lose its still being grounded as a, as an actress um, as it went on and some of those more she developed more groundedness then it got better as it went on and I bought into Rita uh, however in the early stages I didn't quite believe the character and I felt as if it was trying to be played for being funny as opposed to just being. There was an a lot of truth to it to begin with is what yeah, I would say and that, like I said but that did get that's much better. That's exactly it yeah it well is, said especially, think, for me. Especially in act two it just felt a much more truthful performance. I think it was towards the end of the first act as well I meant got more truth out of it you can still be manic and lively yeah. while still having truth and being grounded and believability and because believability. no no that's do people act know. like that in real life that's what yeah. you're saying I, uh, however, you're I saying. thought she grew yeah. she grew into the part and i thoroughly believed her and rita come the end yeah uh, let's talk about the director. We never mentioned the director, so we probably should. Max on, Roberts. I, what do you want to mention about Max? Well, I would like to. I just admire anyone that can take on a two-hander in any way it's and direct hard, a two-hander. I mean, as someone that's directed a two-hander, people think, oh, it's going to be easy because it's only two of them. You're not dealing with entrances and extras and loads of different cast. And what's this person? What's this? Do you know what? It's a graft because there's only so much you can do. You can't hide behind anything. So I really admire the director for giving them business. There was no stillness. In it, which was great. It was no. engaging. And given our, as a two our recent experiences, um, we have seen some dodgy staging with yeah. multiple casts, and all of this felt very natural. They felt at home in their environment. Yeah. So um, really nice. Um, it's made up of a set, lots of different scenes. It's probably no. Um, some longer than the others and we had musical interludes between each scene yes. sometimes there wasn't much going on but I didn't feel as if it detracted no, sometimes that can bug me Oh, really? There's nothing going on, but I didn't feel no, that. Today. I think the music was rousing enough. I mean, the sound designer David Flynn, I'm unsure whether he composed it as well. But do you know what really did frustrate me? The audience members taking the opportunity to talk through those moments. It's all part of the experience. It's every single one, the length of those scenes, those length of that, those scene transitions has been carefully thought out by a director. It's part of the production, it's part of the theatrical experience. It's not an opportunity for you to get your phone out or have a chat with somebody next to you. Guys, you're not at home. Home. Just saying. I'm sensing we had some kind of theatre etiquette <laughs> moments. This I've is, covered this them all just... already. I know I said we'd come back to them, but <laughs> you, I just like, we need to let it go. I, I apparently I do, but it's just frustrating, isn't it? It's just you know what I was thinking about. It who, is. It's distracting, is what it what's is. What's the name of that French playwright who wrote No Exit? Who coined the phrase "Hell is other people." Yes, felt know, that so. tonight. Felt it. Anyway, um, I would also <laughs> also mention Drummond or for lighting design. Just a few set states, but but uh, but but you know. Oh, set design fine. was really nice. Oh as yes. Well. So good, we never mentioned that. Yeah, Beautiful set single set, but really yeah. intricate. A huge amount of books. It reminded me a little bit of that one that was set in the bookstore we saw here. 40, it was for 84 Charing Cross Road. I want to say, 40, I want to say Barbary Lane, but that's Tales of the City. That's not right. <laughs> no. um, 84 Charing Cross Road. Yeah. Yeah. Books being the theme, books everywhere. Mm, yeah, really nice really to Great. Yeah. And that's Patrick uh, Connellan. Now, I mean, let's just come back to the writer. I mean, Willie Russell continues, to be, to, continues to be celebrated as one of the greatest British writers of his generation and rightly so it's rightly bloody so is that what you wanted to that's say wanted okay to say. Let's wrap well it up. that's probably you're probably wondering how many stars we're going to give this touring production of educating Rita which is currently playing here at the Grand Theatre in Wolverhampton for this piece we are going to give <laughs> Four. Four stars. Yeah, just really lovely play, a, a classic for all the right reasons, a good strong production, which definitely grew on me as time went on. I felt I'd gone on a journey with these people. It's lovely to see something like this at the Grand Theatre, which is a bit smaller. It just goes to show the wonderful diverse, of thing, diverse array of things they choose to house here. I think it's a really interesting talking point of a piece. It's one of those you want to watch and then go and talk about. Dissect it a bit. Dissect to talk about art, talk about literature, about interpretation, class. how do we learn, yeah. or, you know, 
What is that about? Can we better ourselves and do our options change when we become educated? Talk about aspiration and ambition. All of All that those stuff things is that in matter. There. Yeah, and, and following this journey. So yeah. I, I appreciated it on that level. Interesting. But well, hey, that's just what I thought. That's just what I thought. Like, please behave yourself, you're at the theatre. But do you know what? We're the Breaker Leggers. Yeah, and we'll catch you again soon. Bye! Bye.